It's time to rank the Hellraiser franchise. Settle in. What is up, guys? I just finished reviewing the entire Hellraiser franchise. It took me over a year to do so. Just dropped my Revelations review, and uh, I thought, hey, why not go ahead and rank the series? You know, finally just cap it all off. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through all 10 Hellraiser movies. Uh, and so without further ado, let's get right into it. Number 10. No surprise here. What a piece of shit. Hellraiser Revelations. I just finished reviewing this one. Um, basically, the big thing I hated about this one was the, the production design felt really, really low budget, which isn't always a bad thing. This just felt like a made-for-TV Hellraiser movie. You had the, the discount pinhead. Uh, just everything about it felt all wrong. The two main characters were completely... Uh, annoying and they were douchebags did not like any of them so this whole movie was just a complete waste it was really never even meant to be made it was rushed into production to save uh, the rights to the franchise two dimension films so yeah enough said on that piece of crap number nine is gonna be Hellseeker uh, Hellseeker is another one where if you have like really crappy main characters unlikable main characters uh, then it's, it's already a step in the wrong direction. And sadly, um, Ashley Lawrence returned to the franchise and she really is the only saving grace of the movie. You know, there's a little final showdown, but it should have been much, much more. But uh, yeah, I really just did not like this one that much at all either. But it was nice to see Kirstie come back to the franchise. Uh, and I would love to see her come back again, actually. And this is the start of young actors getting, you know, getting their start in like horror films. Dean Winters, who you might remember from uh, 30 Rock, was in this movie, playing the main character. Again, just completely unlikable. Number eight is going to be Hellraiser Inferno. Uh, this is another one that's, uh, it's, it's based on like a non-Hellraiser script. A lot of these movies are like that. It was a detective script. And most of these detective movies, uh, Hellraiser movies, I didn't like at all. Uh, this one actually has Craig Sheffer, who is a good actor. Loved him uh, in the movie Fire in the Sky, uh, some kind of wonderful. But he plays a, a dirty cop. You know, he, he gets in too deep because he's, he's a drug addict. And uh, he's on the hunt for this killer called The Engineer. It's kind of a cool idea to have like a second killer in a Hellraiser movie, but it's completely wasted. Pinhead is in this movie all but maybe like a minute. Uh, and that's that's not a good thing. So yeah, there's just so many things I did not like about this movie. It's just really seedy. If I liked anything about it, the production design is pretty decent actually. But uh, other than that, yeah, another one that's just completely forgettable. Number seven is going to be Hell World with uh, Henry Cavill actually. Uh, this one is actually watchable. Not good at all. Um, but as far as like production design and like cinematography, I know I'm known for saying cinematography in my reviews, but uh, I'm a sucker for good cinematography. And this one actually does have that. Uh, it's got Lance Henderson and uh, you know, he's got this, what's known as hell world. It's like an online thing. And you go to this house for, for hell world and you gotta, you know, try to get through it. It's another one of those that just completely forgettable characters. Um, some nice ideas along the way, but uh, Again, another one where you don't see Pinhead that much at all. So I don't know why they kept doing that in these movies. Because Pinhead is like such an iconic looking character. But just completely wasted. Number six is Hellraiser Deader with uh, Kari Wurr. I did actually enjoy some elements of this one. She's a writer. She finds this like videotape uh, of this like ritualistic murder. Uh, and then you got this like cult group and they, they are called Deaders. And uh, there's a lot of interesting ideas in this one, actually. And I think, uh, giving, given the proper direction, this one could have been actually pretty decent. I did like Kari Wurra in this one. Uh, there's some cool pinhead scenes, actually. So overall, it's, it's okay. Nothing special, though. Okay, now we're getting into some of the Hellraisers that I actually like. These aren't too bad. Number five is going to be Bloodline. <laughs> The big thing I really loved about Bloodline was the character of Angelique. I loved her so much that I actually wanted like a spinoff movie with her. And this one was interesting because you had two different like entities of hell, but they had different ideals. You know, Pinhead was about, you know, the pain and the suffering. Angelique uh, was much more, I guess, feminine, for lack of a better term. 
she wasn't into all the the hate and the suffering and all that stuff that pinhead was into so i liked the the clashing of ideals of this movie some really cool cinematography it takes place in three different timelines so it's actually a pretty ambitious script uh and you got a young adam scott in this one too actually so yeah a lot of cool things going on in this one it actually takes place in space in the final act too which is which is interesting. Number four is gonna be Hellraiser Hell on Earth. I think this is the only one I saw in the theater. I might have saw uh, the second one in the theater too, I don't remember. But uh, yeah, this one's one I saw in the theater. This one feels like the MTV Hellraiser movie, if that makes sense. This is at a time when MTV was actually pretty big. I remember them promoting this movie. I actually really enjoyed Terry Farrell and uh, Paula Marshall in this one. They played off of each other really well. Uh, Terry Farrell is actually trying to connect with her father in this movie. You have some cool Cenobite action in the, that last act. Some of it does come off as a little cheesy, a little hokey, but uh, Pinhead has some really shining moments in this movie. Some cool lines. Uh, I enjoyed Pinhead in this one, actually. And it's sad that like most of these movies, Pinhead is really underutilized. But this one, is, there's a lot of fun to be had, I think. Number three surprisingly it's gonna be Hellraiser Judgment the the uh, last movie in the franchise uh, Gary Tunicliffe who has been with the franchise for a long time you can tell that there is some passion there the guy does love the franchise and he loves writing a good story he failed miserably with uh, Revelations but uh, this one's actually pretty interesting he created a really interesting character in the auditor who he plays himself also I like the like I guess the angelic character in the end you know because in hellraiser movies you always see the dark side but you never see the light side you know the heavenly side so i like that that was introduced in this movie so some really cool elements to this one actually uh and it's one that i'll probably watch again pretty soon okay now we're getting into the really good hellraiser movies number two no surprise here hellraiser hellbound this one is the uh second movie with uh the character kirsty Kirstie is like my favorite final girl. She kicks so much ass in this movie, actually. I like how ambitious this one was with uh, the Leviathan at the end. It's like this big maze. And you can tell that the production design in this one was pretty damn ambitious. And this is one that I have mentioned in my review that I'd like to see like them try to remake this one with today's technology. Uh, you know, you could probably do some interesting things with that Leviathan uh, concept. But I also like the return of um, the Julia character played by Claire Higgins from the first one. Uh, she is one of the main antagonists of this movie. She is trying to uh, come back to human form much like Frank did in the first one. And they were considering actually using her instead of Pinhead in future movies, which is pretty damn interesting. Glad they didn't though, uh, even though Pinhead was kind of wasted in future movies. Uh, I don't think that would have worked as well. We, we might not have had another Hellraiser movie after three or four. Hell, I even prefer Angelique over Julia. And of course, number one, this is like a great movie. The first Hellraiser is a classic. It really is. Clive Barker did such a great job, uh, not only directing, but just bringing forth some really interesting and messed up ideas. You know, we had never seen a horror movie like this at all all the character pinhead is one of the greatest horror icons visually ever made and pinhead has so many iconic lines but uh yeah there's so many great things about the first hellraiser ashley lawrence again my my one of my favorite final girls in kirsty uh just so so many interesting elements to this movie actually frank was an interesting character because you know he was using julia to come out of hell this one really deals with lust a lot too, you know. How far a person would be willing to go out of lust. You know, some really crazy stuff. So, yeah, the first Hellraiser, I would say it's like in top 10, top 20 greatest horror films of all time, really. It's that good. So if you haven't seen, you know, Hellraiser, do yourself a huge favor. You can avoid most of these movies though, but the first one is a must watch. So anyway guys, that's it. That is my Hellraiser ranking. Post your ranking below. Uh, if you want to check out my other ranking videos, I've ranked most of the horror franchises. Be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day. And on Fridays, we do Free Fall Fridays. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and drum them out.